All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and, op and opportunity to introduce our next speaker, who I consider a personal friend, and you're in for a real treat. Stuart Rhodes is the founder and president of Oath Keepers. He served as a U.S. Army paratrooper until he was disabled in a rough terrain parachuting accident during a night drop. He is a former firearms instructor, former member of Ron Paul's D.C. staff, volunteer firefighter in Montana. Stewart graduated from Yale Law School in 2004, where his paper, Solving the Puzzle of Enemy Combatant Status, won Yale's Miller Prize for Best Paper on the Bill of Rights. He assisted teaching U.S. military history at Yale, and he was a Yale Research Scholar. Stuart Rhodes also has written model legislation for resolutions against NDAA. It's my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you my friend Stuart Rhodes. Now, I've got an obligation and a duty to be blunt with you. The hour is late, and we are at a crossroads right now. Oh, sorry, man. All right. I could be a little bit loud. The hour is late. This nation is at a crossroads. We are forced to choose right now between 1774 America or 1934 Germany. Which one is it going to be? Which do you choose? Which do you choose? Now why? Why are we in this place? Because for multiple generations, the Republican Party has violated its oath to the Constitution and have voted for the lesser of two evils. That is precisely why we are where we are today. I gave a speech to the Republican Party of Clark County, Nevada in 2010, and I told them, you have one last chance to fix this country politically, that if you continue to send oath breakers to Washington, D.C., then you will deserve to die. The Republican Party will deserve to die. And I think we are at that point right now. This party has yet again, yet again betrayed our trust and yet again supported and put forward another oath-breaking destroyer of the Constitution in Mitt Romney. This is the man. And uh, Oath Keepers does not endorse candidates, so I'm speaking to you as a private individual. And I tell you, he is a traitor to the Constitution. Now, why do I say that? Because he has told us repeatedly that he would have signed the NDAA. And that if you and that any American citizen accused of being a terrorist does not deserve a jury trial, but instead will be an enemy combatant under martial law, under military law, under the laws of war. That's what he's said repeatedly. He is fine with Obama having the power of life and death over you. He is fine with that. And he wants that same power as well. So what he is is another neocon traitor in a long line of neocon traitors. And the very last thing you need to do is out of fear, let fear drive you to vote for the lesser of two evils yet again. That's like taking a reduced dose of poison, 80% poison instead of 100%. What's gonna happen to you if you keep on doing that over and over again? You're still gonna die. So what do we do now? Well, in 2008, when Congressman Paul did not win the nomination, when I knew that wasn't going to be our choice, I knew we were foobar. You know what that means, right? And McCain or Obama didn't make a difference to me because they were both traitors of the Constitution. And that's why I started Oath Keepers. And the whole goal, I'm not going to talk to the politicians anymore. They've already demonstrated their contempt for the Constitution. Same for the judges and the lawyers. Instead, the whole point, is take the liberty message straight to the troops, to the people with the guns in their hands. Because without them, they cannot do it. Tyranny, 
tyranny cannot come to America without the cooperation of the military. And the model we look to is 1989 East Germany. When the East German, when the Berlin Wall fell, what happened is there was mass demonstrations and the Communist Party ordered the military to go out and crush the demonstrations and the military refused and they stood down. And without their support, without the support of the, of the East German military, the Stasi secret police, the Communist Party, they were done. They could do nothing. And there was a peaceful revolution of the people of East Germany who were sick and tired of being under communism. So that is what's possible. Happened again in Tunisia just a year and a half ago. You had a dictator and the people rose up finally to throw off their chains. He ordered the Tunisian military to go and crush the protests. What did they do? They said, go pound sand. They told him to go stuff it. And without their support, he was done also. And he had to flee the country. Now, if the East German military, people raised under communism, can do the right thing, and if the military of friggin' Tunisia can do the right thing, then our military can do the right thing. If, but they gotta know what the right thing is. If they don't know what's right, they will do what they did in Katrina, where they did disarm people. What's happened is, as you know, is intentional ignorance and dumbing down our public school systems, and intentional ignorance through the mass media, and intentional ignorance through the power elites in politics, in law, and in culture. But we can, we can give them an antidote to that intentional dumbing down. One drop of truth, as you know, is an antidote to an entire bucket of bull. Only takes one drop of truth. And all of you in the Ron Paul movement understand this, that once your eyes are open, that's it. You're taking the red pill, and from that moment on, you are lost to the elites. They no longer have any power over your mind. And the same thing, the same thing is possible among the men and women in the military. I want you to imagine this. Imagine if every single soldier, sailor, airman and marine understood what you understand, knew what you know, felt what you feel about freedom. Imagine if they had that conviction in their hearts and in their minds and in their souls to be a warrior for liberty. Would you fear them anymore? You would not. And that's why I invite you, I invite all Ron Paul supporters to join us in our mission and help us reach out to the troops and teach them the message of freedom. If you do that, that's the last thing the power elites want to do. When I get up in the morning, I think to myself, what does Barack Obama not want me to do? What does Mitt Romney not want me to do? What does Mark Potok not want me to do? And then I go do it. Now, I had the honor of serving on the staff of the single most consistent defender of the Constitution since Thomas Jefferson. I worked for Congressman Ron Paul. And what, as earlier, and as was said earlier by so many speakers, what he did is he ignited brush fires. He lit brush fires in the minds of men. He ignited a mental revolution. And that revolution has caught fire and is spreading fast. And I know that given enough time, we will win. And they know it too. And this is the problem, is what I fear is that the powers that be understand that their time is limited that eventually we will win if given enough time. And so my concern and fear is they will try to stop the free exchange of ideas and the internet revolution and free communication among the people which has sparked and spread this fire of liberty. My concern is, is they will try to use the only tool they have, which is force, to try to crush the revolution before we can be successful in a peaceful manner. That's my great fear. That's why I urge you to take the same spirit you've had about going and waking up your fellow Americans and focus on the people with the guns. 
focus on the military especially, focus on the police, and also focus on the veterans. The veterans in this country, all of whom swore that same oath, are a key population. Two key populations will determine the fate of liberty in this country if and when the powers that be try to drop the hammer on us. The military and the veterans. What the military does can shape history. What the, what the veterans do can shape history. If the military stands down like in East Germany or Tunisia, we can have a peaceful restoration, a peaceful return to the Constitution and the principles of the Declaration of Independence. But even if not all of them do, even if the, some of them do follow orders, even if we don't reach enough of them in time, you will have a division within the military and you will, you will see veterans standing up. And so that, the question I asked you at the beginning of this speech was which do you choose 1774 or 1934 Germany? Well, guess what? The veterans of this country have already chosen. We will not let this country go the way of Nazi Germany. We choose 1774. And the message to the current serving military and police is that you will not have the choice of just going along with tyranny over the American people. We will force you to fight us. We will force you to kill us. If you violate your oath, you will have to fight us. And you won't be tyrannizing the American people because you and me and you and us veterans will be too busy killing each other. I don't want to see that happen. But that's the resolution we have to have. You need to be ready and willing to fight and die for freedom to preserve it. You can't just be intellectual warriors. You need to be ready in case you have to. But how do we stop that from happening? How many here have seen the Gray State trailer? That is what's coming down the road. Now why do I sound so urgent? You know what the NDAA is, don't you? It is the declaration of war on the American people. That's exactly what it is. Authorizing military force, that's killing you, military detention and military trial or rendition to some foreign country. That is exactly the kind of abuse of power that led to the first American Revolution. And yet, now all three branches and both major political parties assert that power over you. That is why the hour is late. We are very close to the Solzhenitsyn moment where you must resist. We are very close to the Patrick Henry moment. I urge you, if we have one last chance, a narrowing window of opportunity for a peaceful restoration, we must spread the message of liberty among the troops. God bless America.